spit the drama, barely means nothing to me. I ride by and blow your brains out. Brains out. There's no time to cock it. No way to stop it when niggas. Cocksucker, this shit rap. Check my rap sheet. I feed you to the rat with peanut butter on your feet. 44 Bulldog. What's good, y'all? This Vegas, the hardest force of sports. Welcome to the firing range. When you get in line and you get lined up. You understand me? Today's victim, my next target, are these suck ass 49ers and the fans to love them. Understand something. I was a good sport about Thursday. I was. I was a good sport about it because the 49ers are a better team than the Giants. We knew that going in. Every Giants fan knew we were losing that game going into Thursday. We was cool with that. We understood that. That's what made the comeback versus Arizona so special because our season was on the line because we knew we was going to take that L going into Thursday. But what I can't respect, what I can't accept are unanimous quotes from 49er plays. Put your name on it. Nah, don't, don't, be, don't pussy out now. You tough, right? Put your name on it. So they're calling out Daniel Jones and they're clowning Daniel Jones for what? There's a lot of problems on the Giants right now. Daniel Jones is not one of them. Daniel Jones is not one of them. I'm not going to let Giants fans go from slurping Daniel Jones 10 days ago to hating him. Not even 10 days ago because that, that's right. We played on Thursday a week ago. A week ago, this guy was down 21 points, came back and won. And then he goes and plays the best team in the league and is competitive for three quarters and loses. And now everybody's off the bandwagon again. Did you see these quotes? Oh, Daniel Jones didn't want to get hit. Daniel Jones didn't want to throw the ball. He was scared of us. I'm sorry. Danny ain't scared of nobody. My quarterback beat the Eagles with a broke neck. We're scrambling in that game and everything. My quarterback plays Micah Parsons at Demarcus Lawrence twice a year and puts the team on his back to the best of his ability night in and night out. Daniel Jones has been hit. It's more than any quarterback in the league since he's gotten to the league. And he don't complain about it. Don't y'all ever call my quarterback soft. My quarterback is stiff arm safeties in playoff games. He's truck pro bowl defensive tackles like Grady Jarrett. And he's juke safeties and fillies for 35-yard touchdowns. My quarterback is far from soft. Bottom line. My quarterback was getting his block took off down 40 points versus the Cowboys on opening night because our coach didn't want to take him out. Don't ever question the, court, the toughness of my quarterback. Especially when you're a dirty, stinking, filthy 49er player who knows nothing about quarterback play. How you going to sit here and say Daniel Jones is a waste of $40 million, Mr. Unanimous quote? They can't, I can't believe they wasted $40 million on Daniel Jones. I'm sorry. Didn't y'all give Jimmy G 35? When did Jimmy G making an arm and a leg and couldn't complete one ball to get y'all a Super Bowl ring? How you going to criticize the Giants about quarterback play when y'all are the 49ers? You haven't had a great quarterback since Kaepernick. And y'all kicked him to the curb because he fought for police brutality. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourselves. The 49ers ought to be ashamed of themselves. Gonna sit here and criticize the Giants about their quarterback when y'all kicked Colin Kaepernick to the curb for standing for what's right and then turn around six years later and you draft freaking some bum named Trey Lance. You give up three first rounders for Trey Lance and trade him for fourth. Oh, I'm sorry. Aren't y'all the same franchise who took some bum defensive tackle instead of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson? Oh, yeah, that happened. Aren't y'all the same bum franchise who has Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, starting the quarterback? You're pinning your hopes and beliefs in Mr. Irrelevant. Remember when Lamar Jackson won MVP? A few years ago, and everybody said Lamar Jackson is a front runner. Lamar Jackson can't play from behind. What are the Ravens going to do when games get competitive? Well, I'm going to keep that same energy that y'all kept for the Negro quarterback. The Negro quarterback that y'all didn't want to accept was the best player in football. I'm going to put that same energy on Brock Purdy. I want to see what he does when he trails. Because every Giants fan, every 49er fan that watched that game on Thursday, he threw four picks. 
That kid threw four picks. We didn't catch him. Every week, Brock Purdy goes out there and throws struggle balls. Every week, he throws past 10 yards. It's ugly. It should be a pick, and nobody catches it. It's going to come a time, 49er fans, where teams are going to catch those picks. It's going to come a time, 49er fans, where you can't hide that quarterback with bubble screens and end rounds. It's going to be a time where he's going to have to man up like Daniel Jones like he did for last week versus the, Cat versus the Cardinals and put the team on his back. It's going to come a time where he's going to have to do that. And I don't think he built like that. I don't think he built like that. And I don't think your head coach is built like that either. Ain't this the same head coach who blew a 25-point lead in a quarter versus the Patriots? Wasn't he the offensive coordinator calling them pass plays for Matt Ryan in that Super Bowl? Up 25 in the, th in the fourth quarter? Wasn't that him? With Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, he's still out there calling pass plays for Matt Ryan? Ain't that him? Ain't that the same coach who had a 10-point lead on Mahomes with five minutes to go and was calling pass plays with bum-ass Jimmy G? Ain't that the same coach? I don't believe you. I don't believe in the 49ers. This is the same coach that has blown multiple double-digit Super Bowl leads in his career. And y'all want me to believe he tough? Y'all want, want me to believe he's a Belichick, he's an Andy Reid, he's a, he's a Mike Tomlin, he's in the elite echelon of uh, freaking coaches because he could call an offense? Where is his genius at? Where are these run plays at? Where are these screen plays at when he has double-digit leads in fourth quarters? In Super Bowls. How do you have Raheem Mostert rush for 200 yards versus the Packers, have the number one defense in football, have a 10-point lead on Mahomes, and blow that game at five minutes? All these 49er players, where was that energy towards Jimmy G when he overthrew Emmanuel Sanders in that Super Bowl? Where was the energy then? Since y'all know so much about quarterbacks. You got to be kidding me right now. 49er players, 49er fans want to talk crap about the Giants quarterback and the Giants quarterback situation? Y'all done lost y'all damn mind. Not on my watch. Not on Big Fist watch. This embarrassment of a franchise. Y'all ain't won a Super Bowl in 30 years. 90% of the 49er fans watching my video right now weren't alive when they won a Super Bowl. Let's call a spade a spade. How many of y'all were alive when this team won a Super Bowl? Steve Young was a long time ago. Steve Young was a long time ago. Hey, and 49er fans, never forget, we murdered your quarterback. We caught that body. LT caught that body on Joe Montana. Last time the 49er fans saw Joe Montana, LT had his foot on his chest, stomping his chest like Donkey Kong. He was looking like King Kong out there with his foot on Joe Montana's chest. That's what it looked like. Last time I saw Joe Montana relevant in San Francisco, LT caught that body. Last time the 49ers and the Giants met in a playoff game, we beat Harborough and, and Willis and Alex Smith and Frank Gore. We caught that body. Every time the Giants and the 49ers meet in a relevant game, the Giants win. Last time the Giants and 49ers met on Monday Night Football, didn't Eli Manning throw two touchdowns to Odell in the fourth quarter for a beautiful comeback win? Historically speaking, the Giants own the 49ers. Know your role and shut your mouth. I'm not going to tolerate disrespect from a 49er team that we know going to fold to Jalen Hurts. We know Brock Purdy going to fold when Jalen Hurts put them pressure on them. When the Eagles go up by the traditional 10 to 14 points in the second quarter and Brock Purdy's trailing, I can't wait to see him play versus the Eagles when he's trailing. If the Cowboys ever get their shit together and get a 10 to 14 point lead on Brock Purdy, I can't wait to see him go against Micah Parsons and Stephen Gilmore when he's trailing. I can't wait to see what Purdy do when the team puts some pressure on him. I can't wait. Can't wait. And speaking of putting pressure on the 49ers, didn't y'all just blow an NFC Championship game to Matt Stafford because your bum ass safety who can't catch interceptions? Another double digit lead that your boy Kyle Shanahan lost. This dude is the Matt Ryan of head coaches. Can't nobody blow a double digit lead as a coach like Kyle Shanahan. But anyway, come to the front. Everybody in San Francisco, your bridge, your, your, your fruity theme songs to your television shows, everything about San Francisco. Come to the front, turn around, put a smile on your face, and take these shots.